Talking Small Press Comics, episode number 56. How about that? 56. With Steve Keeter it? over here, Steve Keeter over on the side here, and me, Larna Justin. So, yeah, very good pointing. He's over there. Wrong, wrong Larna's way. over there. Wrong way. Wrong Are you way. kidding? Oh, you're wrong right. Way. It is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wasn't over there. Okay. So, I'm not that's 56. We're starting. What are we going to do when we get to episode 60? We're going to have some kind of cake or something. I like don't that. know. I don't know. I'd like to. I'd like to do more interview videos. I think the yeah. last one we did uh, turned out good. really well yeah. uh, with Mike Jones and Shane Luttrell of uh, Yeet. I think uh, that was yeah. a lot of fun. And uh, there's a number of people I would like to talk to, so we can uh, talk about that and uh, see who we want to contact next. Darn, I wish we could. Me. I wish we could interview Steve Willis. Oh yeah. But he's not that, online. No, he he doesn't do anything online. And that would be the best interview we could do. Really, really. Uh, he, really. he doesn't have a computer. He doesn't have anything like that. Yeah. So, he, he has a new book up, and we're going to talk about that. Yeah, we that's always in this save, episode. We always save the best for last. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so what do you got first? There. I'm ready to go. Well, what first, there's a continuation of what we were doing before in our last video. Here's the latest issue oh. of Yeet Presents. You know what? I don't have my copy of that. I put it away. I thought we were done with that. No, we're not done with it because we oh, talked about okay. it, but we but didn't You're going to have to do that one. I, <laughs> I, I, know what, I know the story that's in there. I mean, I can. That's okay. Book, but I just you read it. Copy. I actually wondered about that. I wondered if you yeah, thought. Yeah, I, I thought we know. were done after the yeah. interview. Because we did that interview. But I do want to say uh, there's, there's a couple of really good, th great things in here. Well, yeah, the Trout, Susie Steam story. Uh, yeah. The Susie Steam, uh, right Steam, the beginning. Susie Steam story. Uh, Shane Luttrell, illustrated mm -hmm. by E. Larry Tobias, uh, mm -hmm. who's a superb. Very good artist. Superb yeah. artist. This is an interesting story. It shows... Um, Shane could have done it too, but he, he elected to have an a art, guest artist. So. Yeah, and you know, he's got a story. He's got a picture here. I was looking at this picture. Um, mm -hmm. well, there's this guy who purports to be in love with Susie Steen, but actually he's kind of a dirtbag. He doesn't treat her right. Yeah, he's not um, very nice. Guy. But at the bottom it says, uh, after N. Adams. So apparently this is based on the Neil Adams issue. But, oh. you know... At least uh, Larry, uh, uh, he he, uh, he tells you, he tells okay. you. So if mm -hmm. it's a swipe or whatever, it doesn't look like Neil Adams. But um, yeah, this was a great story. So we talked about it last time, but uh, mm -hmm. it's interesting um, because um, Sarge, her, her dog is Sarge, mm -hmm. and apparently this entire story, which I'm giving away the ending, uh, but I think it's okay at this point. Well. Is, uh, <laughs> That was I. I didn't catch that right away, and you were the one that told me. Yeah, Sarge. Sarge was having a dream. Yeah, and I went back and looked, and said, yeah, I guess that's what it is. It was yeah. a little hard for me to follow. Yeah, that's, but, a, that's uh, a. It was a dog story. dream. Written My by dog a dreams, so. Yeah, it's a dog dream. Yeah, and you can see, you know. Yeah. They're doing, huh? she's in the spaceship with him. And there they are, in the spaceship, asleep, having a dream. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's an interesting dream. And it's, just, <laughs> it's kind of a, <laughs> it's a nice story. Yeah. And then a little further in the issue, as we're going along here, uh, Learned, you can just take a break, you know, just like, you know, put your yeah, hand on the pillow. Or, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're done? No, I'm not done. Because... <laughs> I want to mention the Night Shadow story, and I think we mentioned that last time, too. We talked about that. We talked about the artist that uh, yeah. drew that, yes. So I did mention that, and who was that artist? Um, I've forgotten. Eddie, Eddie Morgan. Eddie Morgan, Eddie Morgan with lettering by Alan Boyd. Uh, in this kind of a, this, this sort of costume with the, with the hood, and it's like... Um, Kind of a Frank, Frank Miller vibe there. You get that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. So that's that was cool. And the in, the Illo in the in middle. The back. Yeah. Was, was it, isn't this back by Shane? I, I think oh, that was Shane. in the middle. I don't know if Shane did that or the guest artist did it. I think the guest okay. artist did that. 
Yeah, you think so? Well, that's I the think cover Shane, also. We actually asked him this question, but you know, we're we're so old we can't remember stuff yeah, from last week. He told week, us you know. the answer, but you have to watch the interview. Yeah, go back and watch the other to, video. To if you can't remember the you answer can, to that. Yeah, and then of course the improbable girl and the one with the kitty. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Ellie Corrales, Joe. glorious black and white here. Yeah. And um, the candidate so much, calamity. Candidate calamity. Where the candidate yeah. is like, was he a presidential candidate? He's a candidate. Yeah, presidential candidate. Presidential candidate. Uh, but he's taken over uh, by evil forces. Uh, here's a couple of the evil forces here who have implanted a mind chip and are controlling him. Uh, one thing. One thing that's interesting, and this story takes place in South Texas, and uh, that's uh, Joe Ellie Corrales's, uh, that's his, uh, you know, his neighborhood. That's so, where he lives, yeah. And uh, he likes to do stories, apparently he likes to do stories about trains. I find stories mm -hmm. about trains, trains fascinating. A lot of the action occurs on a train. Mm -hmm. uh, I took a train from Orlando to Chicago uh, back in 1988 to go to the Chicago Comics Convention, and that was a lot of fun. I, I, I did not know they had trains in 1988. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were just like little toy trains, and you mm. had to stand, you had to stand on top of them, and mm -hmm. you had to put batteries in. But they were. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I love trains, and apparently, uh, uh Joe is fascinated by trains yeah, as trains. well. And uh, we're going to do this really quick, because Larry doesn't have his copy out in front of you, but we do have this depiction again. Of the oh, black that's, fury. that's the back inside cover. Uh, we looked at that and we thought, oh, oh, oh that yeah. is pretty neat. And that's yeah. a character that's drawn by, uh, has been drawn and written and drawn by Mike Jones, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, head honcho uh, behind uh, Yeet, and, uh, but he didn't draw this one. Uh, Not that one, no. I forget who did, but uh, you see, we can't remember things from one episode to the next. <laughs> Darn it! We, we need to, you know, we need to... Well, I didn't know we were going to do that. We need to write everything down, you know. Yeah. Um, but we're having a good time. Uh, there's so many comics. There's so much stuff coming in. And we're getting a lot of stuff. And we really appreciate it. So We really are. Um, uh, we have nobody to thank but you viewers. So, yeah. Uh, and what what right. I have to do is I have to, like, if we're going to have a show, I have to sit down the night before or two nights before, uh, as it were, and I just read over this stuff. Sometimes I have to read over it two or three times because some of the stuff you guys, some of the stuff you write is um, uh, complicated. Yeah. Yeah. I it, agree. Gets, it, I agree. it gets a little complicated. Because they don't have to worry about editors. They don't have to worry about anybody uh, critiquing the story before mm -hmm. they do it. And that's the beauty of small press. Mm -hmm. The artist does whatever he wants. And, uh, and they just do it. Can't you can't find that anywhere else. But sometimes know. it would help if you had a little bit of a synopsis of I what has like, gone before, yeah. where yeah. you jump into a new we're story. Gonna talk about, we're going to talk about... Uh, we're going to talk about Byron Black and Byron uh, the Steppenwolf Chronicles, Yeah, which That'd is be, one of the uh, most beautiful, uh, gorgeous uh, comics I, I've received recently, we've received recently. Yeah. Uh, and... Yep, this uh, is it. Yep. This is Steppenwolf the Lemonscape Cycle. And right. right on the front there, if you don't know, that is Roland Steppenwolf right there. That's him. As drawn by, it uh, looks like Byron Black did the front cover. Now, oh, the back yeah, cover is, is by um, Michael, Michael Nino. Nino. Michael Nino did the back cover. Right. A kindred spirit because uh, both uh, Byron and Michael Nino draw in somewhat of a Kirby-esque style, a little bit, a little bit like Jack Kirby, but they yeah. enjoy Let me their point out time. something uh, on the back. It's mm -hmm. actually this is not in this issue, but this is one of the things that Byron has come up with, and it's called a man catcher. And if you can see the man catcher right here, catching uh -huh. that guy, that's a man catcher. Yeah. And he uses that in uh, oh, earlier issues that. a lot. When there's mm -hmm. a, any kind of a battle or anything, the man catcher, they get the man catcher out and yeah. catch those guys. <laughs> Un unfortunately, uh, Larned uh, has more knowledge. He's been following uh, Steppenwolf and uh, Byron Black for uh, 
well, much let me more show thoroughly you. than I have. I had, a, I know I had a couple of. There you go. I, might, there I think is, I had that one. There's episode one, and this is uh -huh. from 1994. Mm -hmm. And I want to show you. I first while. got this. I opened it up to that page right there, and I was hooked. Oh I was God. hooked from that Fantastic. moment on. Uh -huh. I'm oh, looking at the first even, page of this new one. Even the dialogue is different than anybody else uses. Yes, that's the first page of uh -huh. uh, Lemon Cycle. And, and uh, Lara's been is. following. I lost. I, I made several moves. Uh, I got divorced a couple of decades ago. Made several moves, and a lot of my comics collection was lost during the mm -hmm. move. It was unfortunate, but I know I had earlier issues and earlier Steppenwolf stories. Yeah, there's a splash page for the Lemon Skate cycle. Yeah. And I, I do not know what the Lemon Skate cycle is, um, unless you do. <laughs> Well, I was I, reading through this. I, I, I don't know really what it is exactly. Mm -hmm. I had to read um, through it a few times to understand. It switches yeah. between uh, something that happened in the age before the Great Conflagration. Yes, the Great uh, Conflagration. Was to earlier. what's happening now. And mm -hmm. now, uh, a meeting of the minds in modern times. Uh, and we have uh, uh, Steppenwolf there. Yep. I'm going to show you something and, uh, that I came up gentlemen. with here. That um, I'm going to put this in the video so you can see it, but I'm going to hold it up right now. Uh -huh. I took one of his covers and then I put the names of the characters on it, so you would know, like Fenris Khan. That's helpful. Um, Clark Albion is in this issue. His name is Clark Albion. That's Fenris him. Fenris Khan is right here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anton Herzog and Roland Steppenwolf himself. And there's no name for that creature there that I know of. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's a couple oh, of the names uh, that may not be in the issue, but that's who they are. And like I say, I'll, I'll put this uh, up in the video so you can see it better. Well, it's, it's, it's a fascinating. If you go back, this goes back, I believe, into the past. Yes, I and think it you does. Have a character in the pod here, and the guy calls him uh, or calls it says Camelopardus or Camelopardus or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's trying to uh, uh, do something here. Uh, he exposes him to a ray, and it causes him to pretty much uh, just be destroyed. But he saves he saves a bit of his blood. Yeah. Now, uh, just reading this and rereading this and rereading this, uh, that blood, has, that bloodline, uh, what he saved has something to do um, uh, with the main character, mm -hmm. with Steppenwolf himself. And, yes, um, uh, uh, Clark Albion was a friend of uh, Roland Steppenwolf's. However, he feels Roland has gone off the deep end, and uh -huh. he now tries to stop him from doing some of the things he does. I'm depending on Larned because he's been keeping up with this series for like decades. So. Well, there's <laughs> a lot of time in between these. Uh, yeah. It takes Byron a while because the second issue, which is issue zero, uh -huh. is 1996. So 1994 was the first one. This is 1996 when he comes up with the second one. And why it is issue zero, I am not sure. But it is the second issue. Again, look at the look at the ink work in the Our Our Burrows. I right. mean, it's just amazing. And here and, we have it in full color. We're, we're getting yeah. into. Uh, I I really have to admit, nice stuff. I am a fan of the digest size inked uh, versions. I like the color; mm -hmm. it's great, but. It does not, in my opinion, top this. Wow. Just my opinion. <laughs> We've got some fascinating creatures here. Here's the, uh, yeah. a, this is, there, this there is, is the man catcher. He's holding it. I forgot that was in there. See him holding the man catcher. Right. And yeah, he, this guy looks kind of like Dr. Doom. Yeah. Uh, iron mask on. But that's mm -hmm. the man catcher there. 
Yeah. And uh, the lady here, she's someone who was kind of raised and trained by Roland Steppenwolf himself. Right, right. Yeah, and she has this long spear, this long spear. It's almost like a light lightsaber or something, a lightsaber. Mm -hmm. Uh, she can twirl and, and uh, attack people with. Um, some of the, I mean, there's so much going on here, but some of the artwork is just, I can't get over it. I just can't get over it. Look at, look at the submarine. Stuff. Look at the submarine here. Yeah. Yeah. The underground grotto kind of thing, and there's a the submarine. Well, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean these scenes where he backs the camera up and from a distance yeah. and he shows the landscape and he shows what's happening are, are just very, very well done. Well, Steppenwolf um, is kind of an anti-hero type character. It's a very mm -hmm. interesting and uh, I would, if I was you, yeah. I would contact Byron and say, do you have any of the older copies available? I don't know if he does or not, but it would help you with the whole story. Oh my gosh! I wish I, I wish I, I hadn't lost the uh, the older issues I had. I'm not I, like I said. Yeah. I made several moves. Certain I, I mailed stuff uh, from one location to another, and the post office lost a couple of boxes, and I, I couldn't uh, find it. So I suspect yeah. that was part of it, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, well, it goes back to uh, if you look here. There's a little part here that tells that is actually Steppenwolf, who was. In That's a little him. capsule and put in the water, uh -huh. and he was rescued by, and I can't remember the guy's name right this second. But I wondered like, about that, so I'm glad you said that because yes, I wasn't sure that was. Yes, that's what it was. He was rescued also. by. Oh my gosh, I can't. Th I can't say the name. Uh, uh, let me see. But he's a main character. He's been with Steppenwolf from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they you know they show some of the characters here. They show some of the characters here at the end. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, but the story is complicated. But I mean, it's utterly fascinating, beautiful to look at, and well paced yep. and uh, well written. Uh, the only thing, uh, my the only thing I want to say is that it would it would have been nice to have a synopsis at the beginning. What happened I, before? I, I do believe that would have helped new readers. I yeah. Do. Oh, yeah. You know, since I've been out of touch, I'm kind of a new reader, and so yeah, yeah. yeah just to know what happened before, what led up to this. Right. And so I mean, perhaps in the next episode that would be cool to have. But what we have here is is uh, tremendous. It's you know, really we one could, of the finest books I've seen. You know, seen what we could do maybe, maybe we could ask Byron Black to come on and tell us in yeah. an interview. That might be something we could think about. Byron, if you'd like to talk to us on it, yeah, we, we're putting we, that out there. Uh, yeah. You can help me explain would, some of this. We would love to have it. you come on and uh, fill in some of the blanks for us. And, uh, yeah. I think that'd be great. But what incredible work. Yeah, what a beautiful. Great really comic. cool. Really cool. Uh, you know, yeah. but, and in full color, cover to cover, full color. One of yeah. the finest books I've seen in, in a while, uh, recently definitely. So... Uh, fantastic job, Byron. Yep. Uh, thanks for sending that. <laughs> Great stuff, really. Uh, uh, it's been that uh, series has been my favorite, even though they don't come out very often. It's all, it's my favorite uh, small press comic. How many of those did you dig up? Uh, how many four, do you have? I have four. four. four, four how many plus, plus, there's another color issue. I want to show you <laughs> what I do with it. Oh, here. There is another. There was a previous color issue. Oh, um, just yeah. the Steppenwolf Chronicles. Yeah. So you can get that also. That probably is still available for sure. Um, and it has a lot of the same characters. That, that, that character that. you mentioned, was that Dr. St. Germain? No, Dr. St. Germain is this guy right here. That's Doctor. Yeah, it looks kind of like Reed Richards a little bit. He's got yeah, that. <laughs> that's, that's him. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. So Dr. there's Saint a lot Germain. of intriguing characters here. Yeah. It, it's, it's more interesting. As you go here, every page has something, something new, something interesting. It looks like here. It looks like he had a religious conversion of some point. Well, Byron is a Christian, and he does put that in his books. 
Yes, he that's does. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. How about that? Yeah. And that you don't see that every day. That's kind of yeah. nice to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so. Gosh, great, great books. Yeah. So much to see. Yeah. Oh, the artwork is just beautiful. So, um, yeah, just everything panel by panel. <laughs> Every panel is like a masterpiece. No kidding. I'm really floored by this. Yeah. Uh, and that's why it takes him a long time to get him out. Here's uh, someone meeting Richard Nixon. One of the characters. Yeah. yeah. The same guy that's down here. It's just I think older that's, here. Yeah. I think that's Clark Albion is meeting uh, Nixon yeah. there. So you book. know it's back in the 60s, at least, uh, the story takes place. Uh -huh. yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> so, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'm just pulled over. I'm pulled over by this one. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, we love it. Yeah. We got like, we got a few more to go. I got a, You know what else I got here? What do you got? From our pal Ken Bailey. You got this one in front of you? Ken Bailey. He, he sends us part two of a story. Part two, but he, he, we, we reviewed uh, part we one. We reviewed part one a couple of episodes ago. Right. And this uh, is part this, two. Well, this would be the Mighty Energy Girl. This one is issue 41. Back to the future. This takes place in the future. You can keep that in mind. No, actually, it takes place in the past. I mean, in, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. We take place in but, the future, you and I. We're, yeah, you know, but, but uh, <laughs> it goes to the future. I think that's what he meant, cat to the future. Yeah, and he has, yeah. a, he has a little... Uh, Fooled me there. Uh, uh, speaking of a synopsis, he's got information here about what happened in the previous episode. But what happened was you got the mighty energy girl, and you got uh, Marie Selinski and Nico, that would be the improbable girl and the wonder kitty. They all wonder have gone kitty, back yes. into the past. Mm -hmm. And... They've all gone back into the past, and uh, here's Energy Girl. Energy Girl is uh, extremely powerful. Extremely powerful, I mean, but she can have some problems. She can run out of uh, uh, energy, as a matter of fact. She can tire out. Uh, so uh, we'll you'll see some of that in this issue, too. Great action scene there. It reminds me of, well, I, I could, it doesn't look anything like this particular person, but I will say that this, this issue is all action. It reminds me of some yeah. of uh, Jack Kirby's uh, comics just leading up where he would have stories that led up to wait till next issue because the stuff yeah. going to hit the fan. Well, the stuff hits the fan in this issue. Yeah, yeah. And in 1947, they're battling against the evil organization, uh, what's it called, Orca? Orca. Uh, Orca or Orc? Orca. Orco. 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 Yeah. Now, I see here on That's the who they're fighting. Page. They're fighting against Orco. They had no idea, uh, at least Marie and uh, Nico didn't, that this organization existed back in the 1940s. They go back in the time. But again, while uh, the Improbable Girl and the Wonder Kitty are in here, the Wonder Kitty's are somewhat reluctant. Um, right. But here's, uh, here's the thing. <laughs> she she has to pick up this truck and run with it, chasing the bad guys, and that does wear her out. And I can understand that. I, I if you're you trying to carry a truck mm -hmm. over the top of your head and you're running, that is going to tire you out, you know? Yeah, that's, that's a little bit of work. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, that, That's what she's doing there. <laughs> so... But uh, she is apparently she's the star, which she should be because this is Ken Bailey's comic, and that's his character. Yeah. Oh yeah. So e girl, Energy Girl is the star. That's where she's picking up the truck in the first. The place. entire issue is really just is really one big battle. Yeah, it is. It, it's, uh, it does not thing. disappoint. Look at these. Look at these um, action scenes. Mm -hmm. That's why I mentioned uh, Kirby because uh, you know some people are really great at action scenes some people just aren't but i'll tell you what ken bailey can pull it off in spades uh and just look at all that look at the action there now this issue is actually from 2022 by the way right this is not not real new uh, that's we just one year it. ago that's yeah. one year ago one year look ago. at my picture look at pictures of me from one year ago you'll see that i was just as handsome then as i am now that's so debatable equal Equally valid. 
And then after uh, the story, uh, there's an after, there's an epilogue all in yellow. All in yellow. Yeah, and that's an cool because he the heroes is different from the story. Yeah, the heroes have saved the day. Yeah, um, but yeah, now as they, always. they have to return to their own time. Yeah, um, but and that's what the epilogue do, is about. Before they do, they're allowed a tour mm -hmm. of. Uh, uh, well, here we are in Laurencia, New Mexico. They're allowed a tour of the city, uh, looking at the old trains. Again, you can see, and this is uh, not uh, uh, Joe Eli Corrales. This no, is Joe. Yeah, I think the awesome. kid likes trains too. Yeah. yeah, showing a fascination with trains and some interesting, mm -hmm. and he knows what he's talking about. A vintage Santa Fe Super Chief, mm -hmm. classic EMD F3 diesels. I wouldn't have known that. To me, a train is a train. Um, and a bit on the back, we got a, a little bit about Ken right there in the top, which we've showed before in one of the other issues. Train and then Joe and uh, their consultant and script technical. Uh, David Martini, and they mentioned David him. Uh, they mentioned him often, uh, so mm -hmm. he's uh, apparently he a good helps out. Yeah. And uh, we've showed this before. This has been in uh, is it, the other is issue. A US, a U.S. Army veteran, been involved in World War II living history and reenactment events, retired Air Force, Civil Air Patrol with a history rating, blah, blah, blah. But he is uh, apparently a great influence. And, uh, well, this makes these comics even better. Look at all the energy girl comics there are. Right. Yeah, it, there's that. a lot of them because this is issue. This one is issue 41, and I believe the last one was issue 44, which mm -hmm. we mentioned a couple of episodes before. Yeah. And here's this classic pose uh, of um, Ken Bailey and Energy Girl side yeah. by side. Yeah. Interesting. Then, interesting. He looks like he's about an inch taller than her, but I think she could kick his butt if she if she wanted to. I would think so. And look at the caricature <laughs> he did of himself. Because there's oh. his photo. Is that the caricature? What you're oh, holding you up? Had the, you had the caricature. This is a oh, photo. I thought this was a photo. I'm just kidding. No. no. I can tell uh, <laughs> that this is a photo. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. Imagine if you had a girlfriend like that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. You never worry about anything, you know? But she, uh, keep in mind, she's no kid. She's right. uh, fairly old. Oh, yeah, she's like decades old or something. She's oh, yeah, to, uh, she's not a kid at years. all. I forget where it tells uh, She was born in 1958, yeah. so she's not a kid. She was certified as a superhero hero in 1976. Yeah, 1976. So she's she has around been for a while. around. Uh, she looks pretty good for her age, I will say that. She can lift 200-plus tons. And sprint up to about 80 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. uh, Ellen so married mortal man. For, for someone her age, she's fairly fast. Yeah. If she can run 80 miles an hour. And, and this is another great comic. You know, if you guys aren't checking <laughs> out Ken Bailey and the Mighty Energy Ken Girl, Bailey. you need to check it out. Yep. Uh, I think yep. uh, you get this one. He's got more you can get. So you got plenty of read of en Energy Girl if you want to do it. Yep. So yeah, I got a message from Ken Bailey. It doesn't mention the price on here. It looks like it's five dollars. It looks like it's five dollars. I'm pretty sure it's five dollars. Yes, and that was the same. Oh, I wanted. I forgot to mention the price on uh, Steppenwolf yeah. Chronicles mm -hmm. is five dollars plus three dollars shipping and handling. So you're talking Definitely. eight bucks. And, uh, and he, uh, Byron Black, accepts PayPal. Uh, yes. BK and, and Black. We'll put his info. We'll put his info uh, down below in the description, like always. But it'll have his PayPal and everything down there. Yep. So, and I'll tell you another thing about Byron Black. He sent us our Talking Small Press review information sheet. One of the few creators that took the time to do that. Well, I mean, if you look, people, if you look at, if you look at the page that uh, Larner has constructed it for the Talking Small Press Comic Show, it does mention a, a form, and uh, you can download the form and you can uh, fill it in. It makes it a lot easier for us because all yeah. your information is right there. So, if we're promoting your book, 
We've got the information in Tippy where to order from, how much to uh, pay. It's there different. are books that we review that have no no contact information inside them at all. I always rail against that. I think everybody should put their contact information inside their comic, especially if you're in small press. Well, How's anybody helped. gonna know? So you know, uh, so the guys that don't do it, you ought to do this so we can tell everybody. <laughs> it's helpful if we know if we what we know we'll put down there. But if yeah. the information if we don't know, we ideally, can't do it. Ideally, ideally, inside the small press publication, there should be an indicia in the front or whatever an inside front cover that gives you that ordering information. But everybody doesn't do that. Yeah, right. Uh, maybe it calls it small press. Uh, I don't know, but it, it does I help. Forget, you know, well, you forget to do it and all yeah. that kind of thing. Because anyway. you guys, are, you guys are doing fantastic stuff. Yeah, we're and not you don't complaining. Have to, you don't we have to not. trade it out or give it all away free. You, you can actually, uh, you know, at least make something back. Right. Uh, it's, it's worthwhile to put a price on it. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> not that all I've right. made a lot over the years, but once in a while I get an order and it brings a you smile to my face. Yeah. We know we're um, not in this for the money, but it's nice to get a sale once in a while. Yeah, some, some, some monetary recognition. Recognition yeah. is fantastic and we appreciate it. But it's just kind of nice if somebody sends you three bucks or whatever it is. Whatever it and, is. Yeah. You know, and you can go out, you can go. To you know they appreciate what you dog. did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Ugly Mug number seven. Ugly Mug. All the way from London, England. From the United Kingdom. Ugly United Mug. Kingdom. And uh, this has British humor. And it's a wraparound cartoon. I will say that this is adults only. And it's down here. On the yeah, other side, somewhere. Down here, where it says adults only. They're adults not kidding. They're not kidding, folks. There's plenty of stuff in here that's not oh adults God. only, but there is some. There it is, right <laughs> there. I'm, right, I'm trying to hold this Adult thing in the middle. Uh, but, you know, but overall, I mean, it's, overall, it's there is fine. some adult stuff. This is not pornographic. It's, no. uh, but it, it, it veers into uh, the adult realm a little more, a little bit more than maybe. Mm -hmm. Like you wouldn't want your your you know your your kids you know to come across a copy and start looking to it and no. asking questions. But yeah. yeah, it's still a great comic. Well, the thing is, I've said this before, but I think <laughs> that this is the Monty Python of comics. It's got the craziest uh, stories yeah. you could ever imagine in here. Yeah, that particular Great script you're holding up. That's one of the best for, stories in the issue, what you're, what you're holding yeah, up there. Crazy stories that are just uh, British humor. I mean, it's British humor all the way. I just can't find that particular story. Oh, it's towards the front. What's uh, that? But, uh, the Wendy Wilberforce, the one that you're looking at. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, Hillary Excess yeah. on board the Green Herring at last calls in at a prosperous port. So you have these people who, who arrive at this uh, port, uh, and uh, they find the uh, first thing they uh, encounter is a giant pig. And they're like, well, that's, <laughs> well, that's unusual. That's unusual. But uh, th this guy, he's bringing everybody there. They're, they're coming ashore because everybody, uh, all, of, all of his crewmates, are, they're sick. They're not feeling well. So they figure this is a good place uh, to stop and get some help. And they put them in a hospital. Uh, weird looking hospital. Everything looks weird in this story. Yeah, every, yeah. every I mean, this is, uh, <laughs> this doesn't make too much sense here. There are four <laughs> panels. One says empty now. And it, our, uh, these superstructures were once homes. They're empty now. Uh, yeah. Okay. You know. I mean. Uh, all right. You're looking at a different story there, but they're all yeah, they're all yeah. they're all uh, unique and. Now this one says only the leaves in the breeze speak, but nothing is enough <laughs> in an insatiable, endless world. Now, I don't know what that means, <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, in here. Along I don't know. With, 
Oh, kinds of crazy stuff. You got stories. Uh, you have to, if you go to the end of the book, you can find the name. They don't really sign their work. This was called no. Respecto. Mm -hmm. it, uh, Spanish word for respect is respeto. You, you eliminate the C, it's respeto. Mm -hmm. But uh, today is the day I will get respecto. I give everyone respect, respecto all the time. Mm -hmm. Why does no one give respecto to me? Uh, yeah, good question. <laughs> and he just goes on and on about it. Uh, <laughs> he comes across these weird-looking people, and they're all talking about respecto. Uh, just uh, strange stuff. Just crazy stories. Just crazy. And wild artwork. You know, just like I say, <laughs> the Monty Python of comics. Okay, and it's was... big. It's oh, that huge. was Ernest D. Lang, record detective that you were just yes, looking at. right. Right. Uh, I was looking for a page count, but he I discovers, don't have it. He discovers noise uh, music, noise music. So what he yeah. does is he collects music that's really just a whole lot of noise uh, put together and recorded on a cassette recorder. And, and uh, he thinks it's terrible, but people are buying it. So he decides to make his own comic, his own uh, noise comic. And he does. And he comes up with a name for himself, and it's Obsceno Pervatron. And he makes one copy, and it's it's really uh, it's really weird. It's just a lot of noise. Puts a bunch of noise tracks together, puts it in a uh, uh, you know some sort of a, a cheap CD store, and yeah. uh, just he only makes one single copy. Puts it in there as a joke, and a month later, uh, he get on eBay. They're selling his comic for it's it's uh, British, so it's nine hundred and fifty pounds. Oh. They're selling for a lot of money, whatever that is in U.S. money. And um, the people are saying it's a work of genius. If only we knew who Obsceno was, we could license his work. And they, they're, somebody's publishing a tribute album. I mean, this guy is, yeah. and he's like, this is getting out of control. And he only made that <laughs> one copy, and he didn't save the master tapes. You know, what's he going to do? <laughs> <laughs> this is just some of the madness. Some yeah. of the crazy uh, at madness in this particular issue. <laughs> then you got pages like this. Yeah, there's some weird illustrations. And I can look at something like that and try to figure out what's going what on. What in the world is that? Is someone what? sucking is someone's be... nose off or what? I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, the guy's got three arms on one side and uh, one arm <laughs> on the other. And he's kind of half abstract and half yeah. real. And... The artwork is real. Uh, some of the people uh, mentioned, let me see if I can find the names of some of these artists. Chris Reynolds, uh, Leston Pettigrew, Denny Derbyshire. These are all British. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. oh, John yeah. Bagnall, uh, Tom uh, Baxter, uh, Tiffin, and there's a lot of other people. Um, Jim Barker. Uh, let's see what else we can find. In here. Here's a uh, respecto, respecto, respecto again. See that? Are they back? No, it's in the middle. Uh, okay, respecto, respecto. Yeah. <laughs> what is he saying? Something about his toe, I think. <laughs> Does he even have feet? I don't Does know. Does he even who cares. have feet? I don't know. Who cares? It, it smells, smells like, like tiny feet. Tiny feet. I don't have a nose. <laughs> uh, okay. Sorry, I keep forgetting that. Now here's one that Larry and I didn't agree on. This is no, called, we didn't agree on this. One. And you see, I'm folding this back because you don't want to see the other side of this. At least we don't no. want to put it in our video because it's rather no. uh, uh, sort of pornographic. Uh, Mr. Tut Tut. Um, but Why what you got? Well, what you got is a is a is a mean old woman. Uh, she might even be a guy dressed in a dress. I'm not sure, but she's mean. And she just she has comments about everything. The reason I thought it was funny, she comments on everything. Pornography, a failure of the imagination. Comics, a childish crutch for illiterate minds. <laughs> I don't know. It struck me as funny. She goes down here. Let me see what else she's got here. Um, philosophy. Uh, today's discussion, ancient thought. And she says, have you no ideas of your own? Uh, for politics, she says, sheeple. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. I, I was laughing at this last night. Learned, so I don't see any humor in it. That's okay. You know, we don't all get the same thing. <laughs> we, don't, we don't get the same thing from looking at something. Leaving the house. Um, a blatant. 
avoidance, avoidance tactic. Tactic. And See, here we go at the end. I don't get that. Okay. Uh, a life well lived in memory, in memory of a devoted father, husband, and friend. She says, shameless, shameless indulgence. indulgence. <laughs> so I thought it was funny. Uh, really? <laughs> look at Larda. <laughs> okay. But I, I thought it was. Apparently, it's, it's, uh, you must no, have traveled. You must have British, traveled to Great Britain at some time or another. Yeah, the British humor can be a little different from American humor. <laughs> but if you if you want to have crazy stuff, and this is it, it, it it's look at this. I mean, just <laughs> crazy artwork. Yep. Wild, wild artwork and crazy stories and. And it's just page. Well, I don't know how long it's been. And this is, I don't know the price on this. I'm sorry. Harley. Yeah. Harley is the guy, as far as we know, Harley is the guy that puts this together and mm -hmm. does quite a bit of the artwork inside, along with the other artists that Steve was talking about. But uh, I, I don't know Harley's, whether that's his last name or his first name. Oh, my and, gosh. I'm sorry. Oh, look, there's. Okay. This one is a long, is a poem, and it goes on for about 10 pages. Oh, yeah, that's a poem. Yeah, I, take, I read that. Take the children out of town. Uh, please, uh, if you just, I'll read a little bit real quick, but there's a lot okay. of zany illustrations, and it's about children. I'm not going to read all of it. Obviously, it's too long. Right, too long, yeah. Please heed this message and scribble it down. You must take the children right out of town, whether <laughs> by bus or on a seat or a train. And it goes on and on and on and on. Grown-ups can wait at least till Friday. If we stick together, we'll all be okay. We're bound to prevail, laugh about it some way, but we must get the little ones out of the way. Uh, skipping down. Enlighten us, please, seeing as you're so smart, just how to tell kids and the adults apart. Uh, those young girls have curves. The lads now much taller. Puberty's afflicting the smaller and smaller. And you see the little girls have the curves and the guys. And, and this is true, you know, that, you know, maybe because of the social, uh, you know, because of the internet and everything, you know, the children, people seem to be becoming more aware at an earlier age. We got it all, and we are to blame. As adults, we aren't deserving the name. It goes on and on and on. But you'd have to read the whole thing. Uh, but it's, it's really crazy, really crazy stuff. Here's one called Dog Breath. Looking ahead. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, dog breath. He may not be man's best friend, but he's certainly at one with the rest of the animal kingdom. That was pretty sick. Because <laughs> <laughs> the dog vomits, and then he goes yes. up and, and licks somebody's face, you know. He's like, yeah, <laughs> oh, what a cute doggy, you know. <laughs> yeah. so, <laughs> There's such, so much stuff in here. So it's, much. I mean, you, yeah. Uh, I wish I knew the price of this, but it's not cheap, and it's probably in pounds. Yeah, uh, if you're watching this, uh, let us know what the price is. Uh, yeah, all right. Um, See if you pounds. can tell us the uh, uh, USA dollars equivalent of this. Right. And I think you can buy this from Lulu Printing. That's where mine came from, there you direct go. from Lulu Printing. Okay, well, you could uh, just go on Lulu. Okay. Just go on Lulu. Yeah, and you may be out. able to go on Lulu. I think I'll. Uh, I think I have the information for Lulu uh, that he sent, and I'll put that in there because I think that's where you have to get this. Yeah. And that would be in the long. United States, so you would get this a lot quicker by going. A lot of great Lulu. artwork, and it's it's you know it's different. It's different yeah. from what we see over here. Oh There's yeah. A lot of uh, strange yeah. and abstract and far out uh, artwork mm -hmm. uh, here, but something about the British sense of humor and the British <laughs> Just, style. Just different. It's just, phew, you know, but we yeah. appreciate it. We do. Yeah. <laughs> it's wild, but, so, you know. <laughs> there you go. Ugly Mug, number seven. We reviewed number six a while back. And, yeah, we had number six. Yeah. In fact, uh, the story on number six was kind of interesting because he said he won and me won, and they had been soaked in water. Something so happened, man. Could, could not <laughs> open them. I mean, the pages they were, were stuck completely together. waterlogged. It was like somebody dug it right out of a swamp. Yeah, the, and we mentioned that, smoke. and he sent us two more. <laughs> that was really, really great. That, that was, was really nice. great. Uh, yeah, he, he didn't have to do that. Well, I know he this did. 
this publication is it wasn't cheap to produce and that he said no. uh, that no. it shows you know, something about it, the integrity of the guy that's putting these out is Mr. Yeah. Holly or whatever his name. Uh, we really appreciate it. And we would like really a clarification do. on that too. What's your name? And could you give us a little more information? Yeah, maybe he could give us his last name if he uh, yeah. dares. If he dares. And, uh, <laughs> there and may be yeah. people in London looking for him. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> looking for him. Did you publish this? Okay, that's it, man. You're yeah, toast. you're done, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up from the bottom. Yeah. Okay, look at that. Last thing. Last thing. Start your day the ugly mug day. This is right at the beginning of the book. There you first go. things first things first. Uh that's the hangover dealt with. And he has paracetamol and acetaminophen. Well, in the United States, a paracetamol is called uh Tylenol. I know that because mm. I'm a pharmacy assistant. There you uh, go. Uh, morning after pill. He's taking a morning after pill. Just to <laughs> you never know what you did the night before. Uh, blood pressure medicine. He's like turning up the whole bottle. Yeah. Uh, vaccinations are topped up. He feels good. And uh, so he's he's going on down the line. A quick scan of the headlines. This is how you start their way in a, you know, a day in an ugly mug way. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and on and on. And he gets to the end. He says, you know, it goes to the refrigerator. Beers in the fridge for later. Cocktail glass. <laughs> Cocktail glass is a chilling. Uh, soup on the stove. Now we're ready to go. And that's there how the book go. starts. So you know you're in for you you know you're in for a ride. Went right there at the very beginning of the book. Right. Uh, he lets you know. <laughs> so <laughs> this is crazy, and I love it. Ugly mug. Yeah, yeah. So okay. I tried to bring this up uh, before, but I didn't. It wasn't successful. Who could it Here possibly it be? <laughs> Here it is. And guess who's on the cover of Cranium Frenzy? That looks month. like that looks like the Human Torch version of Morty uh, the Dog. Yep, yep. That's who and it, it is. does correlate to a story on the inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, it does. There's Morty the Dog. Morty the, the Dog is on the cover. Uh, also, uh, we do have on the back, we'll get to this in a minute, I'm just going to warn you, we have the Buttercube Brothers, uh, the West Coast Buttercube, Buttercube Brothers, on the, the back. The Immortal, the Immortal yeah. Buttercube Brothers. Yeah, we, and we'll go over that, uh, don't want you to miss that uh, when we get to it, so uh, uh, stay Wallace, tuned. Uh, Steve but, Willis, a creative genius, a zany uh, as irreverent as ever. Uh, I didn't expect to get this one so soon after the last I one. I know. This was pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this was there pretty it quick. Is. Uh, this is number, issue number 22, by the way. Number 22. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. starts off with uh, walk like Norm. Now, Norm <laughs> uh, has... Nothing a, normal about Norm. No. Uh, uh, pigs, <laughs> pigs for feet. Uh you see, and they grew pretty darn big. It turned into like <laughs> one pig for two feet. Yeah. Uh, and then it, it, over here, boink, they disappeared. And I don't know what's going on with the rest of these panels. Well, his feet fell off. Now, yeah, the, bottom part off, of his, yeah. the bottom part of his feet. Oh, he got a tree full of feet, down. yeah. Right, his feet start to grow and intertwine, and they create yeah, they, they grow, grow into a a, a tree, tree of yeah. human feet. See, when they fell off, they must have uh, kind of went under the ground a little, like seeds. Right. and it did grow <laughs> a tree that has feet on it. Human feet, so, and the guy's looking at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's thinking, "Well, I need some feet," so he plucks a couple of the feet he, off. He gets, yeah, and, gets and puts them on. And. Uh, he got, him, go. he got him on there, and he's pretty much good shape after that. Good, good to go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, his his mistake, of course, was using pig feet in the first place. Right. Shouldn't use pig feet when you're a human yeah, being. What are you thinking of? Yeah. And right away, you see, uh, here's uh, Steve himself asleep. Oh yes. Uh, yeah, he's this is snoring Mor here. Morky's last plaque. Uh He's snorking. He's snorking. He's a. Uh, he's a. Uh, he's a. Uh, uh, yeah. Running, whistling, 
and uh, snoring. Snoring. That's the word. Amy, Amy, his, Amy, 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 Amy. <laughs> his children are Amy, watching him. Amy, 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 Amy. Amy, yeah. Amy, Amy. So it's like grunt, whistle. And that, of course, is Steve. Like, <laughs> uh, that's Steve, uh, you know. Yeah, that's Steve. Steve and, Willis. With his cats. Also and we his, know he has cats because he draws yeah. uh, pictures on the back of fancy food, cat food. So it turns out so. he's sleep, he sleep drawing. And the kit, the cats say, let's take a peek and see what kind of weird-ass story he's creating this time while he's sleeping. Corky's last Corky plaque. Corky's last plaque. This is what he's dreaming. The cats are somehow able to veer into his mind and uh, see what he's coming up with. Mm -hmm. uh, story of Corky. And this is Corky. It's a strange-looking guy. He has uh, a... Yeah. How's he at? He doesn't got, seem to have a middle... Uh, yeah, face. his little jawbone is just, uh, he's got a big uh, just chin. Kind of gone. Yeah. Yep. And uh, this guy has um, decided he's going to put plaques about everything that happens in his life. He's going to put plaques all over the town. And yeah. Morty the Dog pops in once in a while with a little commentary. Mostly he's pissed off. You know, what, what is going on? Because you got these guys up here, they're, they're looking at pictures of this guy on the yeah. wall. They're, and, they're mesmerized by it. Yeah, yeah they're like super snobs. Like, hmm, some obvious, what does it say here? Some obvious Vonnegut and Brautigan influence there. TC2. Yes, but in a Jungian sense, you could say SW's visual narrative efforts are seismographs of his dreams. <laughs> and they go on. And they're just talking all this nonsense, this inflated nonsense. And then um, uh, Morty does not Morty, like it. He says, You're confusing the reader. Shut up and let the story happen. There you go. <laughs> Morty saves the day. So as it turns out, well, this guy has got a, he's got something. He can melt and create plaques that he can put yeah. all over town. And you see here, there's a picture of him. He's, he's working fool. on it there. You see, he's a, there's a hill, and he's the fool on top of it. You get it? The fool mm -hmm. on the hill. So <laughs> <laughs> somehow his picture is familiar. Up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little Beatles reference there. Yeah. And uh, somehow uh, his pictures end up on the walls. And these guys keep coming back. These snobs keep coming back. <laughs> uh, it's so is, crazy. Is SW basically describing his own social rule in the isolated rural Hamlet of McCleary? Maybe he thinks he is <laughs> the Hamlet of McCleary, Shakespeareically thinking. <laughs> they just go on and on. And then of course, it's a Morty, long, long story. It goes until right Morty can't take it. Morty, shut up. <laughs> yeah. It goes all the way to page uh, um, thirteen here. So it it's goes a long on and on. Story. Yeah. Now, some of the plaques he puts out. So people start finding plaques uh, on the corner of Fourth and Washington. He left a flag, a plaque, and it says. Uh, this was the first place I saw a person vomit in public, circa 1965. <laughs> she was a one, a young woman who was blonde. And I can skip ahead here. Yeah. Uh, here's another one. In apartment 12G, in front of an apartment complex, he puts the plaque on the ground, and he, he drills, he does drills, so he drills them in there. In apartment 12G, I once witnessed the grandson of a famous man in the movie industry light his own farts in a spectacular manner. <laughs> Uh, yeah. so there he is. There he is. With a drill, and uh, you know he's he's putting these plaques down. He puts them down all over town. You know, in a way, and oh, it's funny that I should say this. It's some it's funny that I should say that because Steve Wallace puts oh, his yeah. material, he as you told me, all, all over, over town. town. That's why I'm doing booths this. and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, and, and, I got to show guys, you this. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh yeah. You you finish your thought, but I got I got it. That's a good Steve, one. This is called. Keep looking up. Keep and you looking. see the second yeah. panel. Mm -hmm. Third panel's okay. Sec the fourth <laughs> panel. Fifth panel's okay, but in the last panel, the sixth <laughs> panel, this guy did not look up, and the P from looking up fell right on his head. You the see that? fell through all those panels it and fell landed through on every him. one of those panels. It said keep it looking fell on up. His head. <laughs> it tells you exactly what to do, but the dope didn't do it. <laughs> That's just genius. <laughs> the way he has it, each panel opens up and he falls through and he falls through and he falls, falls through. through. All of them, yes. I mean, that, that's just brilliant. 
<laughs> he breaks all the rules of uh, comic book oh, storytelling. Oh, absolutely. He breaks all the rules. He has his own rules. Yeah. There's and... no rules here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, like I say, um... Well, I can just go on. I can go back to the yeah, stuff. Yeah, we could show it all, but, life, but there's I so think much to show here. everything because that will ruin it for you. I would like yeah. to show the uh, West Coast Buttercube Brothers, though. Of course. We're big we fans. always show them. We're big fans of the Buttercube yeah, Brothers. Yeah, this Coast is one Butter of our Cube favorites. Brothers. Uh, I can't get that good enough for me to read it. There you go. I still got you, it. It's pretty dark, so it's hard yeah, to pick it up. But it's kind of the red, red. Uh, makes it a little difficult. The West Coast of Buttercube Brothers, and there they are. Yeah. Can you read that or not? Uh, only by looking at it. It says, "Okay, um, I'll hold this. So, you read it." So we saw the chef enter the kitchen, and one of the other, there's two brothers. So the one of them says, "Check. We were awake. We were aware he was planning to make a buttery sauce. Check. A plan of action was needed. Check." You said you knew of a safe place where we could hide. Check. And that's how we ended up in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> you see them at the bottom. Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Melvin May May uh, again. Yeah, th these guys just never seem to get a chance. They never man. get it right. <laughs> Went in the microwave. Now, that's a great place for butter to hide. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah, sorry it doesn't show up that well with the light. From the lamp. Yeah, the red but is. It, uh, you can, but it's very readable. In, in the oh, when you see it, so. it's, you hold it in your hand, it's no problem. <laughs> but uh, reading it uh, over the. Uh, I mean, if there, was a, camera, if, a if there was a small press hall of fame and the, oh. among the finest people, well, there has been stuff like that. I know Ian Shires was doing something like that in the small press mm -hmm. hall of fame. And, um, but uh, this guy should be at the top. This guy right here. Yeah. Right at the top. Steve yeah. Willis is, is, a, is a creative genius. And. Uh, I've, I've told you this before, but you cannot buy this. You cannot mm -hmm. buy it. You have to send him a conic in trade or some stamps, but you can, there is no price. You can't buy it. If you do that, if you send him a comic or if you send him stamps, he will put you on his mailing list and he mm -hmm. will send you these every month or every, I don't know, every month, every time he does one. So, so they're coming out so often, it might be twice a month. I mean, it could it be could you know, whatever. It could be because this one came out very quickly after the uh, previous one. So And they always come with extras. Oh, yeah. We have the extras. extras. We always send a little something extra. And the extras so are distinctive. He, he does, these are drawings he does individually. Uh, these are, these are originals. He sends originals. So Steve doesn't have the same thing I have. Right. <laughs> well, tomorrow is here. Now, I'm not sure what that means, but there it is. Uh, the guy has got a cake. Yeah. That, that's one of them, one of mine. Then I have uh, this Drawing one. on the back is, of a waffle uh, box. What was mine on the back of? Yes, mine was on the back of the waffle box also. Okay. Now, this is a little comic he sent. You know, I think you uh, got the same one I got. You got this one? No, I got this one. Oh, you got a different <laughs> one. <laughs> so you see. Discover the life you were meant to live, it says. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. But if you were meant to be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it just goes on and on. Uh -huh. Yeah, the it's Trinity of Reality a Game Show. Uh, <laughs> let me get my fingers out of the way. I can't get my fingers. He, he comes up with so many ideas. He's got yeah. ideas just uh, uh, over. Uh, I uh, flowing. Mental reality door number one. Number one. Mathematically, a mathematical door number two, and physical door number three. Physical reality door number three. Uh, okay. The guy's like, uh, 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 uh. He doesn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. And then the last page, which doesn't connect to anything, 10-4, good buddy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, they're, all just, they're all just whimsical. Yeah. The reserved and inscrutable frog had many surprises in store. 
But he, he doesn't go any further. He doesn't tell you what the surprises <laughs> nothing, are. Nothing else he just, happens. He just lets you think about that for a while. <laughs> yeah. Does it open up? No. Yeah. Uh, oh, it does. Hello, yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, uh, how are you this morning? I'm here to ruin your life. <laughs> There's this guy. <laughs> big eyes and a big smile. I mean, yeah. it's just this just goes on and on and on, you know, with all this stuff. Uh, I even got I even got a pack of matches here. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, he's, he sent me uh, a fire. Uh, we got a pack of matches. Uh, match oh yeah, box. his matchbook uh, comics. Matchbook. Yeah. And uh, they open up. Yeah. Uh, Morty Comics, October seventh. Uh, so he just he just drew this a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and it opens up, and you get uh, some people uh, of pillows here. Yeah, not yeah. exactly a story, but you get some pillows. Yeah, but it's mm -hmm. it's an extra. It's free. Yeah, and, and original. If I, had, if I hadn't have gotten it, it might have ended up, uh, you know, in a in a restroom in a restaurant or you know <laughs> wherever what are you looking I at? have my, one there what are you looking for my equilibrium <laughs> <laughs> so you can see you can see folks we love Steve Willis we and love him yeah. he is the best of the yeah. best and he always uh, uh, corresponds with us too he sends us uh, a little letter I, I send him letter. a letter yeah that's his Lesson letter part. yeah um, I got another letter here Mm-hmm. Yeah. He always does that. Yeah. Um, so he's not on the internet, so No, he's not on anything. Uh, he's just on paper. So when you get something from Steve Willis, that's the real deal. The okay? real deal. It's not copied and pasted from somewhere else. Other um, than the book. Other than the book, these are originals. This is drawn yeah. for me. There's not another <laughs> one like it. So that's original right. artwork. There you go. So hope oh to see more from uh, Steve soon and all the other guys. We uh, we really had some good books. This some yeah. stuff. With, uh, we and we've got guys. word that we've getting a couple more in the mail, so uh, it won't be too long. We'll be back up, so, and we're going to think about interviewing somebody. I don't know who exactly. Maybe Byron Black. Maybe not. But uh, we'll uh, we're going to think about. Out there. I mean, yeah. if you'd like to be interviewed, you might just drop a slide and say, hey, you want to talk to me? Well, I don't know if we have time. You know, I, I uh, We'll see what happens. I mean, Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you, you can request it, and we can turn you down. That's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that came out wrong. Yeah, well, well there is you if we have the time. You know, yeah. I didn't mean it like that. We're pretty, we're yeah. pretty important. That's yeah. <laughs> I'm so, what I'm saying is there's a lot of people out there who deserve to be uh, interviewed. There's a lot That's of great right. talents that out there. Is, we and could we never interview out, them all. The interviews right. we've done uh, so far, we've found out that everybody has something to say. Everybody has a story. Uh, <laughs> and uh, not just the stories they put down on the comic book page, mm -hmm. but a life story about what led them up to it and yeah. what, what, what got them all involved. Uh, and, uh, Did Rod yeah. Stewart say that? Everybody has a story? I think Rod Stewart said uh, that. Something like that. Everybody has a. Yeah, everybody has some a, a story. Everybody has something. a picture. Everybody has a picture. Maybe everybody has a picture. I forget something what it was, like but that. it was something like that from Rod. Oh, I cannot remember that. And I'm a Rod Stewart fan too. Yeah, I like Rod Stewart. Uh, we'll figure it out. Uh, you can tell yeah. us in the comments below. Yeah, whatever Rod Stewart said. We yeah. agree. <laughs> okay, we're gonna wrap this nonsense up before it gets too long. And uh, we'll get this up as soon as we can. We're, this is a recording, so uh, we will get this up to the uh, YouTube channel just as soon as we can. And every picture has a story. Every picture has a story. There you, there go. you go. That's it. Every That's the story of Small Press. has a story. Don't get yeah. every picture That's has small a story. Press. Don't get Theme song from Small Press. <laughs> All right, I'm going to shut it off. So we're going to say goodbye. Adios, folks. We'll, we'll see, see you next, you next time. time.